I have come to discover that lifting weights is, is a waste of time. In fact, dear listener, you would do much better to start holding the weights in the contracted position, only doing the lowering of the weight. Let me give you the rationale. The positive portion of any exercise, the lifting of the weight, is the least productive in terms of stimulating an increase. Why? Because it's the weakest part of the movement. You cannot lift nearly as much weight as you can hold, and you can't hold as much weight as you can lower. On top of that, the, the, the positive or the lifting of the weight is a negative in that it is the one portion of the exercise that makes the deepest inroad into recovery ability. That is a negative. What I've been having my clients doing is holding the weights in the fully contracted position for up to 15 seconds. And then once they recognize their static strength is about to go, they start lowering the weight very slowly. And the results I'm achieving are literally phenomenal. The purpose of a bodybuilder is not to lift merely heavy weights. That's a power lifter's purpose. Let me reemphasize that. As a bodybuilder, dear listener, your primary goal is not to lift heavy weights, but to achieve high intensity or maximum contractions of the muscle. Obviously, the only place that you can achieve a maximum contraction would be in the fully contracted position. That is the only position of the exercise where 100% of the muscular bulk can be activated. So here's the idea. Let's eliminate the positive. It doesn't contribute much to growth stimulation. Beyond that, it's even more negative again in that it makes a deep inroad into recovery ability. Start holding your weights in the contracted position, at least in those exercises where you have resistance in the contracted position, and then lower. Let's go back to the leg training. With my clients, I have been putting a heavier weight than normal on the leg extension machine, a weight considerably heavier than they can handle for six to 10 reps to failure. I help them into the straight leg contracted position and they hold it there for as long as they can, literally, until they give me a signal that their static or holding ability is about to, to go out. And then I emphasize, now start to lower it very slowly under control. Then when they reach the bottom of the negative movement, I tell them to shake their hands out, take a deep breath, reset psychologically, and let's do one more. I just had a very clear example of the success of this last week. I had one client start up with me three and a half months ago. He couldn't do the whole stack on the leg extension for even one rep. I forget what he started out with, but after two months, he was up to the whole stack for 14 reps. Then he hit a sticking point. He couldn't go beyond 14 reps for three workouts. This was when I started working with the idea of static contracted holds and lowerings. For two or three workouts in a row, all he did was hold a very heavy weight in the straight leg position and lowered it, doing it two times in that fashion as I described. The next workout, we went back to see if there was a carryover to the positive strength, and his, his leg extensions went up to 20 reps. That's a phenomenal improvement, and I'm seeing this with many other people. I've been using it most successfully on the pull-downs. You can do it there because, obviously, once you get into the contracted position, there is significant resistance. You have to fight to hold it there. What I do is put a little bit heavier weight than they might use again for six to 10 to failure. I help them pull the bar down into the clavicles, which is the fully contracted position. They'll hold it in this case for about six to eight seconds. Again, until the static strength starts to go, then they will lower it. It's interesting, I had one kid say, well, how come your clients are only doing, in some cases, one rep or two reps? And I say, well, look, if you count the number of seconds that they're working, it's as long as it's just as long if not longer than one set but we've eliminated the least productive part of the movement and are focusing on the more productive part of the movement remember here listener as a bodybuilder your primary concern is not to lift heavy weights that's that's the purpose of a 
power lifter or Olympic lifter. As a bodybuilder, your primary consideration, your overriding concern should be to achieve high intensity muscular contraction. On a deeper, more scientific, technical level, the science of bodybuilding exercise revolves around the issue of muscular contraction. The only position where you can achieve a full contraction is in the fully contracted position. For instance, at the, at the top of a curl. That's the fully contracted position. At the top position of a leg extension, where the tricep it would be when the arm is fully straightened and the elbow locked. Now the problem the listener is going to have is finding exercises in his gym that will enable him to do this. Now most gyms do have leg extension machines and pull down machines. Fortunately over here at Gold's Gym in Venice, California where I train people personally, we also have a full complement of Nautilus machines, all of which provide resistance in the contracted position. But don't worry about it too much. Do it where you can. Try it with the pull-downs, the leg extensions, see what happens, or you can come out to Gold's Gym here and I'll put you through a few workouts. And I'm, I'm not exaggerating when I say that this is literally one of the most stunning discoveries in recent bodybuilding science. Just because we call this thing weightlifting, it's not cast in stone that you just lift weights. In fact, most bodybuilders, knowing nothing about this, they don't even do the positive or the lifting properly, they throw the weight. And then once they reach the contracted position, they immediately let it flop back down, not emphasizing either the contracted position or the negative. They're, they're severely limiting themselves. Your muscles, remember, listener, have three levels of strength, the positive or the lifting, the static strength, which is your holding ability, and the negative. If you only work one level of your three levels of strength, do you see where it only stands to reason you're, where you're not going to achieve full muscular development? Where is it cast in stone that you should only lift weights? It's a tradition. And again, if you want to take a truly scientific approach to this thing, you've got to reject tradition or at least question it.